Hey everyone, I'm Dave with Beast Made Reviews. Of course, the channel dedicated to reviewing quality at different price points. Today, I wanna to talk about one of the most underrated and coolest knife brands out there. That is Finch Knives. Now I know there's a huge knife community out there and I am part of that knife community. I really love knives and I've been kind of casually collecting knives for several years. But a few years ago, I really got into traditional slip joint knives and I went down the rabbit hole deep. I got some kind of cheap Rough Rider knives. I got some case knives. And then I went and I got some Great Eastern cutlery knives, which I think make the best um, production slip joints out there. So I really developed this passion for traditional knives, but I still love modern convenient folders. And then I found Finch knives, which is a great kind of merger of both of them. They're modern designed knives. Many of them are flipper designs. They'll have liner locks or frame locks, and they're made with more modern components and steel. So these are kind of a merger of both of them. As you can see from just the styling of these, the styling is obviously inspired by traditional knives, which is what I really love about these. Now I'm gonna show you a lot of B-roll footage here. I know you knife nuts really love close-up shots of knives. I'm gonna show you as much B-roll as I can. Now let's go ahead and dive right into it. Let's start with the three knives that I have. Now these knives were sent to me from Finch Knives, so just keep that in mind. I'm gonna keep my review 100% honest as normal, but just keep that in mind. They sent me these for review. They have several more in their line, and these are only just a small sample size of what they offer. I have a few in a couple different scale materials and colors, but they have many different scale materials, a lot of traditional materials like bone and wood and micarta, as well as some other things that they offer too. These are some of my personal favorites from the line, so I'm gonna show you those. Now let's start with what I think is my absolute favorite, and that is the 1929 model right here. Now this 1929 knife is a pretty small knife. The overall length is about six inches with a blade length of two and a half inches. It weighs three 3.1 ounces and the blade material on this is 154 cm which i think is a great steel for this it has a flipper design of course and the handle material that i got on this is carbon fiber i love the shield on the front that is very much in line with a traditional knife uh, slip joint aesthetic the flipper works absolutely great you can push it or you can light switch it as well if you want to light switch it it works really well it's very snappy and authoritative it's a really great knife I love this clip point blade style. It's a great blade that has a nice tip on there. And it, this came out of the box pretty sharp. Now, as you can see, this is a frame lock. And out of the three that I have, this is the only one that is a frame lock. The other two are actually liner locks. What I really like about this is it takes a lot of inspiration from Barlow's, the traditional Barlow design. Barlow's are a very, very old traditional knife that has a lot of history and meaning behind them. If you've read the, the story, um, Huck Finn or Tom Sawyer, I forget which one it is. Uh, Tom Sawyer wanted to get a Barlow knife and it's a knife that a father would pass down to a son. And because Tom Tom Sawyer was a, an orphan, he didn't have that. So he saved up his own money to buy a Barlow knife. So there's a lot of significance with this type of design. But also, I just really love the design. I think it's a beautiful aesthetic. I have a few Barlows. I really like the Barlow design a lot. Here are a couple that I have from Great Eastern Cutlery. This one over here is their smaller uh, design. I forget which number it is. I think a 25, number 25. And this is a little Barlow. And this is the one that I think has the most connection to uh, this 1929 model. It's very, very similar in its style. Barlow designs typically share a lengthened bolster on the outside to bolster the strength of the blade, as well as a teardrop shape. As you can see, that's exactly what the 1929 model has. Now here's another one from Great Eastern Cutlery, and this is the Northfield and I forgot which number this one is. I have to look it up, but this is another one that is really popular with them. And this is another Barlow design. Has a lengthened bolster right here, as well as that teardrop shape. Now this one has a different blade shape. This is a sheep's foot blade, but you can find Barlows in lots of different blade shapes. I really like the clips on these. I believe these are a, a milled type of clip. They're the perfect kind of compromise in clips. Typically in clips, you'll find something that is either like a bent steel or even something that is milled. A lot of times in milled clips, they look great but they're they're usually really hard on the pockets what i like about this it has that milled look 
but it's not hard on the pockets. It has a lot of material taken out on the inside, so it makes it to where it's easy to ride in the pockets. I really like it a lot. But if you wanted to take that clip off, it's really easy to take off. Now, I really like this knife a lot. I think it's a great price at $120. I think that's a great value for what you're getting here. Great steel, great design, and it's just a great, easy, EDC knife to have. The only minor quibbles that I would have, and these are very small quibbles. The first quibble is that there's only one in orientation for the clip, and that's for right-handed use and for tip-up carry. Now that doesn't bother me because that's exactly what I want. So very minor quibble, but other people might not like that. Other people, especially left-handed users, might want a different side for the clip. You don't really get that. The other thing is that I love the shield, but typically if a shield is done really well, you won't be able to feel it with your fingernail from the transition, which you can hear, it's it's a little bump on there. Not bad, but not perfect. On these grace and cutlery knives, you won't be able to feel the shield at all, which is a sign of high quality. And along with that are the screws. The screws on here, there's um, a few screws on this design. Some of the other designs don't have as many screws. And the screws you can feel as well, which Again, very minor quibble. It doesn't really take away anything from the experience of the knife, but when you're feeling it, it's kind of one of those things that kind of takes away a little bit from the experience. But all that being said, the 1929 model, killer. Absolutely love this. All right, next knife we're gonna talk about is the Runtley. And the Runtley was the one that I first saw on YouTube. When I saw it, I immediately recognized the non-traditional history. I really like this one a lot too. Now this one is another flipper design. This is on the smaller side as well. This is, I think, the smallest one out of the bunch that I have, hence the name Runtley. Overall length on this is five and a half inches. The blade length on this is two and a quarter inches. And the weight on this is 3.15 ounces. It uses the same steel, 154 CM, which I really like. And the outside on this is kind of polished G10, which I also really like. I like that they polished it and they didn't just leave it rough because I hate rough G10. Now they say that the clip is DLC coated, but they don't say that about the, the blade itself. They just say it's black, which I'm not sure if that means that it is not DLC coated or if it is. I'm not really sure. Now, as you can see from the blade shape, this is a Warncliffe blade with a saber grind starting at a little above the halfway mark on the blade. It's a flipper and the flipper is pretty good. Um, it's a little hard just because it's a smaller style knife. It's kind of harder to get it going, um, unlike some of the other ones. So this doesn't snap with as much authority as the other ones do, which is one of the downsides I think about this. One thing I really like about this is on the edge of the blade, there's actually a nail nick and you can open it with that if you want. The nail nick is a very traditional opener for traditional slip joint knives, which I think is pretty cool. This one has a liner lock on the inside and the liner lock is pretty good. I have no, I have no complaints about it mostly, except that it's a little bit hard on the fingers whenever you're moving it. It's a little bit on the sharp side whenever you're kind of digging into the to the lock, which I don't really care for. I wish there was a little, uh, maybe a little cutout or chamfer or something there to kind of take away some of that, that harsh edge. And whenever you're closing it, your thumb kind of gets hooked on that uh, tang of the flipper right there as you're closing it, which is kind of a little unpleasant. Those are very minor gripes. One gripe I do have about this is something that is kind of hard to get right with a Warncliffe style knife. And that is the blade edge is not exact. Usually what I'm looking for with a Warncliffe or sheep's foot blade is I'm looking for an exactly straight edge with a really good edge geometry all the way around. That's hard to do. You can't always do that. You can see that it does, it's not exactly straight on the edge and the edge geometry is not exact all the way around. Again, that's a, just a minor thing, but that's one thing that I always look for in a Warncliffe and a Sheep's Foot, and I noticed that right away. Again, I love the shield on this one. They moved the shield to the bottom, which I think is pretty cool, and this one actually glows in the dark, which I don't have any footage of, but that's also a really cool touch. Um, you can feel it again, which is one thing I don't really care for, but it doesn't really take away anything from the use or the design. This is a really great little tiny, tiny little knife, little flipper. If you like Warncliffe's or you like Sheep's Foot like this, I think that you'll really like this a lot. It's a great EDC knife, it weighs hardly anything. It feels stout and sturdy and it's a really sharp knife. So you can get just a really great razor-like um, precision on this. I like this a lot. Having a good EDC little Warncliffe like this is absolutely amazing. I really enjoy that a lot. Another thing I really like about this, it has a G10 spacer on the outside that is similar color as the outside. And of course the milled clip, which again, as I've said before, is a great clip overall. It has fewer screws in the construction, which I really like a lot in the design and it makes it really clean 
clean in the way that it looks. Overall, just a fantastic knife from Finch. Love it. And to show you comparison with its traditional brother, here's a Fremont Jack by Northwoods from Knivesship Free. And I really love this a lot. This is another uh, Warren Cliff or Sheep's Foot. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe it's a Sheep's Cliff <laughs> style blade here, but it's a very similar style of knife similar to the Rutley here. It's kind of a reverse teardrop shape with a sheep's foot or worn cliff sticking out the top there. Really like that a lot. Both are beautiful knives, but the Finch, what a great pocket EDC little tiny knife, great. And the last knife that I have from Finch is this one right here, the Takuna. Now this one is obviously a very, very orange, safety orange uh, knife here. And this one is the biggest one that I have, um, but still not huge. It's a great size. The length on this is seven inches. The blade length on this is three inches. And as you can see, very beefy blade with um, kind of a saber type grind there on the top there. Again, this is 154 CM and I really like it. This is a liner lock on the inside and it's a G10 on the outside that's polished and also milled. It's got this nice little sculpting to it that almost looks like sculpted stone or something like that. Very, very cool design, really nice touch with this. And that to me is what kind of takes the design over the, over the top. It's beautiful in the way that it looks. It has steel liners, of course, and these are all black on the inside. It has a very simple construction here with only one screw on each side, which I think is beautiful and very clean. It's got that classic clip that they have. It's a little tiny bit different and it's also curved. And this clip they say is actually titanium, which is pretty cool. Adds a, adds a nice touch to it and takes away a little bit of the weight. Now this one is easily the biggest one that I have. It's super beefy and I love it. I really like carrying this one a lot. When you flip this out, man, it flies out and it flies out with authority and clicks. And it is just satisfying just to play with. It is nice. The one thing I don't like about this is the liner lock right here. It has a little cut out of it to kind of take away some of that material, which I appreciate, but then they add some jimping on the inside of the clip right there. And that digs into your fingers bad whenever you're trying to uh, disengage the lock there. And it kind of stings, especially after a few tries, you just want that to disappear. I wish they didn't have that jimping right there. And then it would have been even better. Again, it has the shield on the outside, and this is another one that glows in the dark here. And like the Rutley, it's part of their sport collection, which is a few knives. And this one takes a lot of inspiration from classic Sodbusters. And that's why I got the, uh, the orange design. You can find Sodbusters in a very classic safety orange. So apparently these were popular with farmers who would uh, make sod and they'd have to cut the little pieces of sod into squares I'm guessing. I don't exactly know if that's 100% right, but that's where the legend comes from anyway, and that's pretty cool. But the Sodbuster is a classic farming design, which is really interesting. You can tell it has that nice curved uh, feature there, and they make great EDC knives. I like the Sodbuster design a lot, and the orange is a classic color that they have. So yet again, the orange is just another thing that is a little tiny nod to the history of traditional knives there. I really like how this is just a Sodbuster, but in a very modern form. Beautiful. Even the blade kind of shares a similar design, but looks a lot more modern and beefy, like a lot. Of the three knives that I have, this is definitely the most stout. This is one that feels substantial in the hand and I like it a lot. It's a fantastic knife that is modern, but still very traditional in the way that it looks. It just checks all the right boxes with me. Super usable, great EDC, just a great knife. I really like Finch knives. I think they're doing just a fantastic job making these knives. The knives are great EDC tools. They're great EDC knives just all by themselves. If you had no experience with traditional knives, they just have a cool look to them. But if you like traditional knives, I think you'll really like Finch knives. I think they just bring just a great elevated type of traditional appeal that I think is fantastic. I have no complaints with the sharpening. I have no complaints with the blade steel. I have no complaints with the clip. Everything that you need in a knife They've nailed. And that's why I think that Finch Knives is one of the most underrated knife brands out there. They're just spectacular. And my sample size is just a small sample size of what they offer. I didn't even get to some of the cooler ones like the Snakewood or the JG10 or the Jig Bone or the Dark Denim Micarta. All these are really traditional materials that they use in old school knives, but work beautifully on these modern knives. Just genius. 
I think if you're looking for an EDC knife that is modern and classy and doesn't break the bank, you definitely need to check out Finch Knives. I'll have links down below to all of these if you want to go and check them out. So that's all I have for Finch Knives. What do you think of this knife brand? I am just enthralled by them. I absolutely love them, but I'd love to hear your thoughts about this. Do you like traditional knives? Do you like slip joints? Do you like Finch Knives? Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. I love you for it. And click that little bell so you get a notification every time I make an upload. Thank you again. I'm Dave with Beast Made Reviews.